Today we're fixing a Rebel T6, also known as the 1300D. As you can see, it's got a shattered uh, rear screen and plastic, both. Let me turn it on. Got some crazy spider web and just the tiniest bit of the image down the side. So, we have two parts, two parts to replace. That's the LCD, that's the rear piece of plastic, and that's the adhesive that I need to apply to the rear piece of plastic. Opening this up, the only thing that is really uh, notable is you have to slide that cover for the, the viewfinder off to get at two screws that are hidden beneath it. I believe all the screws on this particular camera are the same. However, I still like to lay them out in a pattern just because if you wind up with an extra screw, that'll kind of tell you where it came from because you know approximately in the shape of the camera what side of the camera it came off of. Open this door and you do have two screws underneath it. And of course, the thing that I always forget to do until I'm midway through taking screws out is to remove the battery. So, be sure you do that. So we've got two on the top, three down the left side, four across the bottom, and two on the right side of the camera. So now that I've got those all out, this will just lift out. Well, it falls out of its own accord once you pull this off, but it looks like it doesn't come out until. There aren't any clips that hold this in, but it does kind of hold itself in there, uh, kind of in a cantilever method, just like uh, some of the other cameras that I've torn apart. So you do kind of have to pull it out bottom first a little bit, and then it will come loose. Now don't just rip it off, because there are ribbons that you're going to have to disconnect on the inside, too, specifically. One is to the LCD, which of course is what we're repairing today. That is this ribbon right here. And this one, you just lift straight off like that. The other, thankfully, is a little bit longer leash, and it is the connector for all of the buttons on the back. It has a brown flip that you just need to flip out towards you, and then the ribbon pulls straight out. We now have the back off. Set the camera down and work on this part of it. We don't have to remove all the screws that are visible here. Only have to remove the ones that are actually in through this plate. That plate we can leave alone. So we've got, it's like about four screws in this one. And again, same story, just kind of lay out a pattern of the way you pulled them out. Then you don't have any questions when you're putting them back. And this does have what appear to be screw holes, but aren't, that actually have pegs in them to, to help hold it straight. Okay, then our LCD actually does not include this. This is the control cable. So we've got a, a flip here that we need to flip out. I like to use my fingernail, you can certainly use a spudger. And then we should be able to simply remove the LCD from this frame. And it looks like we have another layer here. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and take out 
I believe this is the backlight. And this particular one does not have a flip, it's just held with pressure. So it has a, a pinhole, you need to put the tip of your screwdriver in, slide it out. We can get LCDs with the backlight. The one that I purchased did not come with it. So then we've got a, a metal frame that you can see. Metal frame on the inside, the backlight is in that back area. I'm just going to compare here real quick, make sure my replacement is the same. And it shows every indication of being the same, so we're good. Now this uh, metal frame just has a couple of points where it's pressed in. It's not soldered or welded or anything like that, it's just pressure. So you just give it a little bit of pressure to pop it out, but you want to be careful that you're not bending this entire thing because you don't want to break your backlight assembly. Okay, so we'll lay that down like this. And I'm going to use a spudger. I don't know that that's necessary. Just to kind of get underneath the edge of this and lift it up. Now, of course, this LCD is already broken. I don't really care. <clears throat> don't really care if I break it again, but I don't want to wind up breaking the backlight. So, a certain measure of caution. Okay, and there we have it fully separated. It wasn't glued in or anything like that. It's just uh, the pressure is set in there. So then, just going to lay the replacement in there. Being sure that you've got the black side out, not the silver side. And on mine, and I would imagine on most, there is a protective film that you want to peel off of your new LCD before you get this all put together. Protective film, although you can't see it really in this, it has a sharpie black stripe right across it. So if you forget and you get the whole camera put together, you're going to regret it. So definitely get that pulled off. No idea why they put that sharpie mark across it unless it's just to let you know that it's there, but then we're just snapping it back together. And we have a recent reassembled LCD. Now, the next thing to be sure when you're putting this back in, you're gonna lay this in here, of course, so that the LCD is pointing outwards, and the ribbon has to be on the same side as where it goes, for obvious reasons. So laying it in there first. And this just has a little bit of pressure to it, no screws or anything like that. And also notice I'm not touching the LCD if I can avoid it because we don't want to leave fingerprints on it because once they're there, they're going to be really hard to remove. So the LCD, of course, you do have to flip this, this black or whatever that is, dark brown piece of plastic up, get the ribbon lined up and then slide it in and flip that down. I actually got that a little bit crooked, so we're gonna try that again. This ribbon is not solid. It, it's kind of held in there with pressure as well, so it can wind up crooked. So if it's crooked, your ribbon is gonna go in crooked. So just make sure you've got it straight. I'm still just not quite happy with it. Okay, so that right there is how it should look, how far it should be pressed in. This one, of course, is going to be a little bit more difficult because the clip is already tight when you start since it's just held with pressure. So we get it started and then use something pointed to push it the rest of the way in. And there we go. So now our ribbons are connected. We can move on to the next phase, which is this piece of plastic. Now, you could use a heat gun to warm this up and remove it. If you were just replacing this without replacing the, the whole assembly, 
it would be significantly harder because you're trying to do it from the outside. Doing it from the inside is actually really easy because you can just push out on the plastic. And you don't want to push out all at once in one place really hard, but as long as you're just giving it gentle pressure, glue should just let go and let it come out. Okay, so got this off. There are a couple of things to notice on this. Um, it is directional. Uh, basically, the black is just a bit of ink that they printed onto the back of the plastic. So you want to make sure that you've got that on the inside, not the outside. You can tell by the way it shines, and also apparently they put some some marks on the inside. So see the mark, you know that's the inside of it. The other thing to notice is that this is not symmetrical. It's flat down the one side, curved on the other. So. That's the way it goes in, the curved on the left, the flat down the right-hand side. But before we can put the new lens in, we need to put the adhesive on it. So mine came with a protective barrier on here. That just keeps it clean until we're ready to do this. The adhesive is something that is a little bit tricky if you haven't done these before. Basically, they, they put it down with uh, th this whole panel. Whoop. This whole panel is adhesive. but Obviously, you don't want glue on the back of your uh, the lens that you're actually looking through. So there's a little bit of a an edge that they trim into it so that you can only expose the part of the adhesive you want. So we'll do that. And of course, you got to make sure you got the curved to the curved. And then you generally only get one shot at this, so try to do it right. Okay, so got that on there. Got a nice ugly uh, adhesive backing across our screen now. And then go ahead and rub the edges to make sure that it sticks real well to the plastic. Otherwise you'll wind up pulling your adhesive up when you pull the backing off. Then we grab this and if all goes well, we should just leave behind the adhesive we want to leave behind. And look at that, it actually worked. Okay, so we got this. <clears throat> Just lay it back in there and that part of the repair is done. Pretty straightforward. So now we can go ahead and put the LCD back into the rear of the camera. Basically just line up those two pins, get them pressed down into place. Then go ahead and put the screws back in. Now, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> this tends to fall out, so I don't know why it's not falling out at the moment, but if yours has fallen out, be sure and put it back in first. Now we have these two ribbons. We'll go ahead and do this from above, otherwise your ribbon will be going in the wrong side of the jack. So we'll put this one in. Of course, this does have a flip, so you need to make sure the flip is open. And you slide it in and flip it closed. This one is just pressure, similar to the sort of clips you see in an iPhone or really any Apple product. You just lay it on there, make sure you've got it straight first before you get a lot of pressure, otherwise you will damage it. And then you just clip it into place.
Okay, and there our plastic is back on. We'll get our screws in. And of course, remember these these screws are going into plastic. Don't over tighten them, or else you just strip it, and then then you've got a problem. Oh, now there it falls out. And uh, should be self-explanatory, but there is a jack right next to the screw hole that is not much larger than the screw, so don't uh, accidentally shove your screw into that jack right there. piece cover to put back on which of course slides down from above put the battery in and find out if this worked and there we go hopefully this has been helpful to you if you have questions drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do